I'm coming on a little bit early tonight. I want to do some prayer and some uh, decreeing for angelic armies to be released upon your lives and ministries. So um, before I go into my teaching, I'm going to do some praying right now. I encourage you to join me in prayer. You can pray in the spirit, pray in your prayer language, or pray along with me. Amen. But I'm praying and I'm releasing that angels that are orbiting in your life from the third heaven will descend from paths opened in the heavenly places through the second heaven into the first heaven of this earth to give financial breakthroughs. I really just feel strong that God is getting ready to release financial breakthroughs for many of you, many that will receive this prophetic word. The angels from these pathways in the name of Jesus will work to transfer the wealth from the wicked into Christ's heirs. We decree that transference will happen both individually and corporately. Amen. These angels will, will, will are assisting God's release of blessings spiritually, physically, materially upon your homes, upon your extended family. Angels sent to show rams caught in the thicket. That's those promises that God has caused to become supernaturally captured. That are waiting for you to go and to claim them and to lay hold upon them. Amen. And these are in every area, spiritually, physically, materially, in your homes, and even into your extended families. Amen. And let these rams be loosed in Jesus' name. We pray for angels to be sent to reveal hidden treasures that you knew nothing about. That your eyes become open to see these hidden treasures in Jesus' name. This just happened to me today. I was praying today saying, God, I, I'm praying for financial breakthrough. I'm praying, God. And the Lord led me back out to my garage to a box. And I felt impressed. It had been sitting on my shelf. It just said office books. I cut it open and I looked through it and I found some electronics that I completely forgot were in there. And I was able to post those electronics today and that with a couple other things on eBay and I was able to be blessed financially today in, in, in selling these. So I believe that's part of those hidden treasures, things that God's going to reveal to you to financially bless you. I'm praying now for angels to lead you to places of great resources that God's prepared for you, this is especially in the areas of business, in the areas of, of family, resources. Amen. In Jesus' name, I pray for angels to lead you to those places of resources. In Jesus' name, I release this. I pray that people we don't even know to be used by the Holy Spirit and his angels to bless you financially, to bless your ministry, to bless your home. The angels are intersecting them with our lives. Amen. Bringing us into divine points of crossing that, that financial release come forth. I pray and release for angels to be sent to lead the kingdom, the children of the kingdom of God into inheritances that you know, you know nothing about. Inheritances that have been sitting, laying dormant. I, I command and decree for these to be loosed in Jesus' name. I decree abundance. I decree the overflow, that not just enough come into your life, but the overflow, plenty. Amen. I pray that covenant partners will bring blessings I pray for all the covenant partners that have sold into John Arcobio Ministries and INAP and Spirit Led Ministries. I release to covenant partners. I release to Troy Calhoun. I release to Todd Trahan. I release to, to James Bird. I release to the Roses. I release to the Angianos. I release to, to the Coes. I release to, to Prophet Suarez. I release to Church of Champions. I release to Jonathan Subra and Oasis. I release to all these different people. I release to, to Free Church and the Collins. I release to Mike Mendoza and, 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 and Mercy Place. I release to the church in Modesto with, with uh, Javier Garibay. I release in the name of Jesus that these covenant friends 
that have caused covenant blessings that you enter into financial success. And I command this to be released in Jesus' name. I decree for the windows of heaven to be open over every single one of us, just like the word of God, the rhema, and the logos is speaking is happening in this hour. I decree for blessings to overtake you. Amen. Blessings to come upon you and to overtake you in every area of your life. Bonuses, bonuses in the name of Jesus to be released in Jesus' name. I release checks in the mail that you never knew were even coming. PayPal uh, releases, financial releases as according to the kingdom of God. Amen. Deals, just deals for those of you in business. I, I decree deals, great deals coming upon you in the name of Jesus. I, I, I decree for inheritance to find you. Those of you that have inheritance, that it finds you. That, that the investments become blessed and released. That, that, that property that, that God has released to you become increased in value. Amen. That the wealth of the sinner is being laid up in the name of Jesus. That this be released upon you in Jesus' name. I, I decree over each one of you that you are ordained to bear fruit. I decree that we are a fruitful people. We are blessed in the city. We are blessed in the country. We are blessed coming in. We are blessed going out. And, and as the Lord commands his blessings upon us, just as Deuteronomy 28, the Logos, I release the rhema of this. I release that God will bless the works of our hands. That God will cause us to become plenteous in goods. Amen. I decree for, for God to, to open his good treasure over us and to rain it down upon us. I decree for angel armies be sent to connect each one of us to covenant blessings. That is to be released in Jesus' name. God has placed us here on this earth to establish the rule of God's logos and rhema, his statutes, his covenants, his laws, his principles, and that King Jesus will release angel armies in Jesus' name. Angel armies in Jesus' name to let this be accomplished. I speak for these angels to, be, to move with great power to give great victories now in every area, spiritually, emotionally, in your families, in your business, in your ministry, great victories. Amen. Even now, the angels move from their heavenly places in the second and third heaven, empowered by the Holy Spirit to enter the first heaven, to give supernatural breakthroughs to you in Jesus' name. And I decree that the remnant church, the body of believers, the great army of God, that you will rise up and declare what thus saith the Lord. And angels will hear it, and together we will join forces to fight hell, to win, and to see victory. Amen. God bless you. That's a free prayer I wanted to start tonight with. So I'm going to go ahead and get shifted here, and uh, we're still about 10 minutes early, but God bless each one of you. I'm going to go ahead and start early tonight because we've got a lot of ground to cover. Welcome, Bear Bear and Sister Lisa. Tell you, before I get started, since i got a few minutes, you want to shout out where you're from or say hello, now's your chance. Normally I'm pretty focused and I just jump right into my teaching. And, but if you want to shout out to me and say, God bless you, hello, I'll, I'll give you a, a minute or two to do that. Toledo, Ohio, God bless you, Bear Bear. Welcome, Toledo, Ohio. Who else is in the house tonight? Amen. Praise God. Boston. Amen. Wow. Prophet Troy Calhoun's in Boston. Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Roy, Utah. God bless you, Sister Lisa. Amen. Welcome. We've got folks from all over here tonight. Amen. Praise God. Anyone else want to give a shout out? Tell us where you're from. Amen. Then we're going to jump into our lesson here in just a moment. Amen. Smyrna, Tennessee. Hey. Awesome. Is that the Pursers? Amen. My old friend. 
Derek Purser, I think. It's, I recognize the Smyrna. I used to minister quite a bit there. I might need to return again. Amen, if that is Derek Purser. Well, I'm going to go ahead and... Well, there's Brother Davidson from Colorado. God bless you. David Davidson, thanks for jumping on. Amen. I know I'm a bit early here. Probably about 10 minutes early. I just uh, was anxious to get going here and start teaching the good word of God. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. God bless you. Again, I'm John Arcovio. I know most of you know me, but if you're new here, we are in the midst of a uh, teaching on, on ministering spiritual gifts. And we, we have 12 lessons. We're on lesson session 11 on teaching ministering spiritual gifts. And this week's teaching is on developing ministry teams. This teaching series was put together by Dr. Bill Hammond with Christian International. And uh, we've taken this and we've um, uh, been teaching it now for 11 weeks now. So we're so glad you joined us. Uh, the scripture we're going to start with is Ephesians 2, verse 19 through 20. Ephesians 2, 19 through 20. Yes, thank you for inviting followers. If you want to just swipe your screen from, from left to right, I think, on the Apple or up and down on an Android, and you can uh, go and invite followers from your Twitter account uh, to join us on this Periscope. Amen. We invite and are open to people that want to come and to learn about how to minister in spiritual gifts. And of course, if you want to know more about us, you can go to our website at www.spiritled.net. It's www.spiritled.net. Ephesians 2, verse 19 through 20 tells us, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So this is one of the foundational uh, uh, scriptures on the uh, fivefold ministry and gifts of the Spirit, emphasizing the importance of apostles and prophets, as well as the other three ministry team members. And again, uh, we believe strongly and are very strongly convicted that God has raised and established a fivefold ministry in this hour to train, equip, and release believers into significant apostolic ministry to go and impact the seven mountains of society. And that is our vision, that is our passion, that is what INAP is all about. It's gathering the fivefold ministry team to empower and to equip believers for significant ministry to conquer the seven mountains of society, that they may flow into the kingdom of God. And, of course, we believe that, that um, the fivefold ministry team is there to train, equip, and release believers into this significant ministry. And that's what we're, our focus is, whether we're teaching uh, in seminars, whether we're launching epistolic centers in different, different parts of the, of the Seven Mountains Society, or whether we're sharing with a local church. That is our vision. Of course, we stand behind... The fact that you don't have to be a prophet to prophesy, God is raising a prophetic generation that is going to flow in the anointing and the flow of God. So the purpose of this particular session, session 11, which is on developing ministry teams, let me pause and say that you cannot accomplish anything of, of any significance unless you are part of a ministry team. God is doing works through ministry teams. God is not... Um, Rangers, God is about doing things through a team ministry. Please forgive me, I got people that are, are texting me. Um, and uh, I've moved the class at 6 o'clock and I try to put a lot of posts out. Some folks are still a little late on the draw because I had to move it back for our East Coast folks. Amen. So ministry teams is where it's at. And the, the desire of this teaching today is to help you understand the team mentality. God does his greatest works in team ministry. I grew up understanding and receiving team ministry. 
understanding what God is doing in the efforts and the function of team ministry. Uh, for many, many years, God allowed me to gather together ministry teams to be able to go out into foreign countries and to see great things happen through the power of the Holy Spirit and crusades uh, from small crusades, speaking to 20, 30 people in open field, to as many as a half a million uh, in some of the crusades that God allowed me to be part of in open fields in Africa. And, and tens of thousands being healed, filled with the Holy Spirit, delivered by the power of God. And all of that happened through team ministry. So I believe more than ever, we as the body of Christ should establish a team mentality. Now, one thing about INAP, INAP is simply um, the acronym for uh, International Network of Apostles and Prophets. Of course, here on my shirt, you can see is our, our vision. It's awakening, aligning, and activating um, the prophetic generation into significant ministry. And this, that's what we stand for here with International Network of Apostles and Prophets is team ministry, not just lone rangers. A lot of times, especially with men that or women that feel they have a calling as an apostle or prophet, they tend to sometimes be lone rangers, either by force because they're in certain circles and certain religious circles that don't receive the ministry of the apostle and prophet, and so they're pushed all the way to the outside and marginalized, or sometimes it's just through hurt or rejection or pain. And we seek to bring people together to understand and to receive the team, team mentality that all of us, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, are a round table, each preferring and honoring one another, co-laboring for the kingdom of God. And that's our focus here. That's one reason why we have chosen to um, not be a denominational organization or to even be part of any denominational or organizational group. We desire to see the kingdom of God go forth. We also want to investigate the scriptural foundation and benefits for team ministry. And then finally today, in this lesson, we are going to teach important principles and elements that can be found in effective team ministry. So the church, the ecclesia, the body of Christ, is a team. Even in the word of God, when God sent them out, he sent them two by two. And um, it's important to understand the value of joining together with others. You can, the only way you can accomplish anything of significance is to join and be part of something greater than yourself. And that greater is the kingdom of God. So the body of Christ is a team. It ministers within and without, and both ministries are important. The within reflects the need for the local church, the local ecclesia led by shepherds and teachers and ministered to by the fivefold ministry of apostles, prophets, and evangelists. And it's important to understand that that, that weekly edification of gathering together and not forsaking the assembling, but allowing that local ecclesia to work its work is part of the body of Christ working together as a team, edifying itself in love. But you can't stop there. You must be apostolic. And that, must, that means going outside the four walls of whatever type of ministry you're with, you're working with, to go without, to teach and train and equip believers to make disciples and to teach and train others, bringing them into the kingdom. Of course, it, it happens through the blood of the Lamb and the testimony of Jesus. And it's by doing the righteous works of God. The saints take from the heavenly realm and they bring it to the earthly realm. You know, that's what God desires, is for the people of God, the saints of God, to walk in prophetic giftings, to walk in powerful, significant ministry, impacting the seven mountains. Amen. And if you don't know what the seven mountains are, you can go to YouTube, type in my last name, A-R-C-O-V-I-O, -O, and you can click on many teachings I, I have on there. And there's many other good teachings out there on the seven mountains, and I won't take time to go through them all right now. But that's what believers do. They take from the heavenly realm, that second and third heaven, and bring it to the first heaven of the earthly realm. This is what Jesus did when he walked the earth in bringing forth the kingdom of God through his disciples and through his teachings. 
Ephesians 4 and 16 talks about this team ministry, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto edifying itself in love. The only way the body of Christ can edify itself is if it walks immersed and completely covered with the agape love of God. Anytime the body of Christ begins to operate outside of love, it becomes sounding brass and tinkling cymbals, as Paul wrote about. Also in 1 Peter 4 and 10, it tells us, As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Now notice that. Every man, every woman receives the gift. Amen. It's not an exclusive club just for the qualified. The biggest, biggest lie and mistake that the modern church world has bought into in this past hundred years is thinking that the ministry, the fivefold ministry, was the only ones to be involved in the work of ministry. That is not what the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us he raised the fivefold ministry, according to Ephesians 4, 11 to 13, to equip saints for the work of ministry so that every man and every woman may operate in that significant gift God has given to them as good stewards of the grace that God has extended, that enabling power of God that allows them to operate in that particular gifting that God's put in their life. So teamwork increases effectiveness. Reproduction is based upon teamwork. All creation speaks of the benefits and the affection, the effectiveness of team ministry. The principle of teams is evidenced in all nature by the dependency upon one another. Na nature itself teaches you you can't be alone. It takes a team for multiplication. Jesus commanded, excuse me, God commanded, be fruitful and multiply in Genesis. And that is still a commandment that lives here today. Amen. When you enter into kingdom ministry, you enter into the vast ocean of God's kingdom. And you understand, sometimes it can be overwhelming when you enter the vast ocean of God's kingdom. But you know what? I've reached a point, I'm just thankful that I'm part of God's kingdom. Part of the team doing a work for the great kingdom of God and for the greatness and the glory of God. So here are five benefits of the team ministry concept that every single ecclesia, apostolic center, whatever group or, or, or gathering you are working with, you should embrace. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12 tells us two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him. Again, if two lie together, they have heat, but how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So this is a spiritual principle, friend. You see, if you're alone, if you're a lone ranger just working all by yourself, then the enemy can prevail against you very easily. If you join with somebody, whether it be a, a, a prayer warrior or someone that covers you in prayer, amen, then you can withstand. But the threefold cord is those that God joins together along with being in Christ. That is not quickly broken. Verse 9 in Proverbs tells us, they have a good reward for their labor. Amen. You know, this is, this, this references as an abilities, creative, excuse me, not Proverbs, excuse me, Ecclesiastes, verse 9. Verse 9 speaks of the provision, that they have a good reward for their labor. Amen. When you have a team, you have increased creativity, increased um, effectiveness, quickness, and multiplication for end results. Going all the way back 20 years ago, every single church I led, every city I was in, I always had the vision that I would rather raise 10 to 20 men and women 
train them, equip them, and empower them to go out and do works and raise works for the kingdom of God than to sit and try to build what is commonly known as a megachurch. Now, I'm not saying megachurches are bad or evil or wrong, but I just don't see how effective they can really be. I believe that when you sow into the lives of others and release others, you create and you release a multiplication and a creativity and effectiveness through team ministry that can never come from just operating from one source, one ministry, one leader. Verse 10 of Ecclesiastes 4 talks about security. If they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. His fellow. You see, when you're, when you're not by yourself, when you're not alone, when you have someone that you're accountable to, a higher authority, a, a father in the gospel, an elder, a mentor, then you have safety. Even though God has led me out of certain streams of ministry into a greater ocean of his kingdom, I have learned in the past year to lean more heavily than I have ever before upon those that I'm accountable to, those that mentor me, those that God puts in my life because there's security in that. Verse 11 speaks of comfort. If two lie together, they shall have heat. This talks about compatibility in ministry, confirmation and encouragement that comes from team ministry. Then finally, verse 12 tells us that there's protection, that if two shall withstand him, three, a threefold cord is not quickly broken. That's the beauty of being around those that know your character, know your ministry, that when people start falsely accusing you, others can stand with you. And that's the beauty of team ministry. But not just security, but strength. That threefold cord. You see, science has proven the exponential increase with each rope that is added. Not just actual increase, but exponential. As the enemy comes like a flood through wide open gates today, the greatest need is to stand together as one. We must learn to stand together united. That's one thing we try to really, really teach in INAP. Not to have differences that cause disunity and cause division. There's some people that, that, that they have personal convictions, personal ideas, and that's fine if you want to live them. But don't take those forward to try to create chaos and division because what we value is unity because each time you bring another cord together it becomes stronger and stronger for the sake of the kingdom amen jesus prayed his last prayer he prayed in the garden he prayed that we all may be one as thou father art in me and i in thee that thou all that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Another step, that if we can reach that place of unity for the kingdom's sake, and I'm talking about conformity, and I'm talking about manipulation, domination, and control that so many groups exercise. I'm talking about true unity, standing as one in Christ, then the world will believe that thou hast sent me. Jesus said that. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me. That they may be, may be perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. So whatever the purpose is, whether it's church, business, ministry, government, education, family, arts, entertainment, media, Teamwork multiplies the effect of any given vision. My friend, we are interdependent, not independent. This is the way to prophetic destiny. Again, since I stepped away from a Pentecostal stream that I was a part of for 27 years, I have learned the importance of interdependence. Amen. Depending not only upon the grace of God and the Holy Spirit and walking in the peace of God, but understanding how God entwines the relationship, people together. Amen. And the common bond is not agreeing exactly on every single thing. But the common bond is God 
bringing people together for the sake of his kingdom, kingdom vision, and moving forward in kingdom purpose. Well, here's a few additional benefits of team ministry. Safety and balance. Proverbs 11 and 14 tells us prophetic and apostolic filters can be put into our life for purity. It's important if you're a prophet or you're operating with a powerful apostolic gift that you have godly people, mentors, to bounce things off of that God is speaking to you. So you don't stray off into the left or the right, that you stay uh, within the boundaries of God's word, within the logos, and within the purposes of what God is doing to give you safety and balance. Number two, team ministry exemplifies church body life. It's a living demonstration of Ephesians 4 and 16, as well as John 17, how we can be one in him. Three, unity in team ministry lightens a load and takes pressure off of ministries. Nothing is worse than some preacher that feels like, or some minister or pastor, that, that he has to do everything. That the whole, you know, some people put on themselves more than they should. God said, I will not put more on you than what you can bear. When we try to do too much, when we burn our candle at both ends, we're just going, 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 trying to make it happen through aggressive methods and, and trying to, we burn out. God doesn't want you to burn out. God wants you to make it to the end. And that's what team ministry does. It causes the load to become spread out. But you know what? Some people, they want to be the man. They want to be the woman. They want to be in control. Honey, you can't have true apostolic prophetic revival and be in control. You got to let God be in control. No one minister, whether you're an apostle or a prophet or an evangelist, pastor or teacher, has to do it all. I know I reached a place of exhaustion because we launched INAP and we quickly grew to about 70 ministries across the world. And I was killing myself trying to jump on a plane every week to be somewhere, to help somebody. I had to go help them. I had to go, you know, if I didn't show up and, and show them I care, they'd think that I'd abandon them. Well, somewhere back in, I think it was May of this year, God told me, quit. And I backed off. I actually began to delegate many apostolic ministries and duties to the different ministries like uh, Wayne Bird and Stephen Antoine and, and, and different ones to carry the load. You know what I discovered? They were very capable. Amen. And they've done a great job. And I have had li very little oversight in what they do because I trust and I know that they are flowing in the leading and the power of God. And I discovered that no one person has to do everything. Shared ownership in things that God releases in your life in the kingdom Understanding rank and order and authority, because there is rank, order, and authority in the kingdom. I'm not talking about hierarchy of men. I'm not talking about positions of men. I'm talking about recognizing spiritual authority that God places and honoring that. And I thank God that many of these, these men of God that I've mentioned have honored me. That when I do show up for a meeting, they respect and honor the authority God's given to me as a leader to nations. Amen. And I, I honor that. Praise God. So let me give you some examples of team activation. Mark 6 and verse 7. Jesus sent 12 out two by two. That is God's design. Having said that, I try to encourage our ministers, don't ever try to do ministry alone. Try to always have someone go with you. When I go overseas, I always try to bring at least one team member. I don't like going by myself because God's design is two by two. Matthew 28, 19. Jesus commissioned the church as a team to go and make disciples or evangelize the world. Leviticus 26 and verse 8, as well as Deuteronomy 32 and 30, tells us the exponential power of team ministry. One chases a thousand and puts them to flight, and two, not two thousand, but ten thousand to flight. Acts 13, verse 1 through 3. Paul and Barnabas were set, sent as a team for apostolic church planting. They were the first planters for the kingdom of God. 
apostolic order does not just send one, but will send a qualified, gifted team of two or more to release a work. Proverbs 6 and verse 6 to 8 tells us, Ants, in the natural realm, model the effectiveness of team versus the individual limitations. His design of teamwork can even be seen in creation. So here's a few important factors found in effective teams and team ministry. Team can be defined as a yoking together, kind of like oxen that pull together in unity to plow. It can be defined as a group of people working together in a coordinated method or orderly process. It can be defined as a group of people constituting one side in a competition with purpose. It also can be to join in cooperative activity or action for a certain purpose. So therefore, team ministry is a group of people who are laboring in action together in unity in a organized way, order, to accomplish a common objective and purpose. See, this is actually where organization comes in in a benefit. The problem with mankind, he's taken organization and he's twisted it for his own purposes, for political purposes, for power, for different agendas. But there's nothing wrong with having good organization for kingdom purposes and kingdom work. In fact, I think to do God's work properly, you must be organized in such a way that you can do God's work in a powerful way. So, let's look at the purpose. Amen. The purpose of team ministry. Team ministry answers why something exists or the reason why it was created. Purpose becomes the anchor which holds the team together. It brings depth and stability to a group and it becomes what your cause is. Order. God is a God of structure and process. Let me repeat that. God is the God of structure and process. If you're going to be used in a powerful apostolic gifting and ministry, you will have to follow the structure of God's design, not man's design, not what man and tradition brings, but what the word of God sets. Also, there's processes you'll never skip. The human body has structure. That's how we stand up. If we didn't have bones in our body and muscles, we wouldn't be able to function. It's put together based on a skeletal frame for support. God understands the benefit of order. 1 Corinthians 14 and 4 tells us that God is a team leader. Every team needs a leader. That's where rank comes in. And authority, recognizing that there are those that have paid a price through prayer and fasting and through applying themselves many years and gaining ministerial experience, thus they qualify to be a leader, amen, in God's kingdom. Not through parliamentary procedure, not through politicking, not by winning friends and influencing people, by leading well. That's how leaders prove themselves to be good leaders and even co-leaders. So a team has leaders, co-leaders, a team has members, and it all operates and flows through structure and order. Unity. Unity is so important when it comes to team ministry. I think that that is probably something that, 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 that groups and, and ecclesias and apostolic centers and churches should pray for and seek for more than anything, for God to allow the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace to prevail in their midst. So let's look at what unity is. I'll tell you, unity is not uniformity. A lot of times people like to be part of country clubs. They'll only believe certain things if everybody in their group believes the same way. You know, if it's a group that believes everyone should wear, you know, a red shirt with blue pants then they ridicule and they reject anybody that shows up with a blue shirt on. Why you got a blue shirt on? We're the red shirt group. Matter of fact, 
they derive their righteousness and their sense of spirituality from the fact that they all in conformity wear a red shirt. And of course then, if you're going to be an organization, you got to write in-depth bylaws and many, many rules to protect and make sure everybody conforms on the same page to the red shirt society. God's kingdom is not function that way. God's kingdom is organic. God's kingdom is about relationships. And when you find unity in the kingdom of God, you understand it's the ability to live together in harmony and agreement, agreement with related parts to make a complex or systematic whole, having similar values and principles, but making sure you're one in mind and spirit. That's the picture of true unity. Paul said that every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. And when you understand how unity works in the body of Christ, you understand there's diverse members. There's people that will be different. There's people that will, will, will believe it's, it's, it's right to do only comes through the blood of Christ. Then those are things that cannot be negotiated. And that's where you do come together in unity of mind and spirit. So, unity is based upon, number one, the principles of cooperation. Nehemiah called a team together. They are composed of various backgrounds but they were willing to cooperate for a common purpose and goal. They, they gathered everybody from priests to goldsmiths to women, from different education and skill levels. Each fully gave of his or her efforts, abilities, and cooperation. Position, job description, irreverent. You see, so many people make such to do about, about positional things. And that's why most of the modern organized religions reject the apostle and prophet in the modern day because it doesn't fit their neatly little pyramid of organization. It doesn't fit their neat little, little positions that they have put together. When you understand true unity, you understand when you're doing the work of God, that position or job description is really irreverent. There's, there was one non-supportive group in Nehemiah 3, and that was the elitist who would not cooperate because they felt they were more holy and better than the rest. But the rest of the work of God that Nehemiah accomplished was because everybody, regardless of their education, skill level, gave from their efforts and abilities and cooperated. So, amen. Number two, unity is based on the principle of coordination. Who does what? Now, this is where the fivefold ministry comes in. This is why we recognize apostles and prophets and evangelists, pastors and teachers. It's just simply understanding who does what, who operates in what function. That's it. It's not hierarchy. It's not power. You see, Nehemiah coordinated 42 different stations and assigned individual places of responsibility. Each knew their place on the wall and understood their job. It's beautiful to see when we can relax and get off our arguments and our high horses of, well, I don't believe in apostles, I don't believe prophets exist, and I don't believe women in ministry, and have all these classifications and all these chauvinistic elitism ideas and mindsets. Well, you know what? I don't believe that God can use somebody who doesn't believe this or that. And, and let me tell you something. There's something about coming together in true unity and everybody just knowing their place and backing off and just letting people operate in their gift. There's beauty in that. You can get so much more done. 52 days, Nehemiah rebuilt a wall that everyone said he could never do it. Everyone laughed at him, mocked at him, but he accomplished a powerful work because he understood the principles of unity. The third thing that unity is based upon is the principles of communication. I am one that believes strongly in communication. I love to over communicate because communication is vital for unity in teams. You have to build a platform to articulate the vision that God has given to them. The Bible says, take the dream, write it down, make it plain. Amen. 
communication lines must be kept open. If you want to destroy the unity of a team, cut off the team members from their leader. Make it to where they cannot approach the leader, they cannot question, they cannot ask, they cannot communicate. A lot of times that happens where people pay the busy card and they, they become unaccessible to team lead members. Once that happens, my friend, you have just removed one of the most powerful principles that unity is based upon. You've guaranteed the failure of a vision because you've destroyed communication lines. Members must be accessible to leaders after ministry. I could not stand some places in the former stream of ministry that I flowed in, that I would go and preach a message when I get done, they would try to send bodyguards around me and try to whisk me off through a back door into a waiting office for VIP only and, and, and to be waited, to be escorted out to a car, to be whisked off to some fancy restaurant because you're a man of God. I would tell them, you know what, leave me alone. And I would jump off the platform into the people because I wanted to pray for people and I wanted to minister to them. And a lot of times I would make leaders very angry because they were wanting to take off for the high rise restaurant. And there I am down there talking to loving people and ministering to them because it made them look bad. Because they had such an unapproachable bubble around them they created that they were such a celebrity, so important that you couldn't get past your bodyguards. My friend, that has no place in the kingdom of God. Brother, if you're doing that, get off your high horse. Come on, get real with life. Members must be accessible to leaders after ministry is done. Miscommunication breeds misunderstanding. We have too many people of God embroiled in misunderstanding because we got too many cocky peacock preachers, cocky peacock prophets that are going around and they are simply creating these platforms of self-importance instead of serving the kingdom of God. You see, the spirit of unity is absolutely vital. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10 tells us, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. Let there be no divisions. That means no broken bones in the body. No disjointed areas. Amen. Among you, that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. See, diversity of gifts and administrations make up the complexity of a true apostolic prophetic team. The key to unity is for every member to submit and to align with the apostolic authority that is established and the order. That's how you flow in this area. So let's look at ability. Ability. Amen. How does ability or, or giftings or, 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 or uh, talents uh, work in the flow of team ministry. Ability speaks of the power to perform. It is demonstration of the grace of God through the level of spiritual skill that has been given and developed within each team member. Remember, all team members are not gifted the same, nor operate in the same rake, the same level of faith and grace. We see this in Romans 12 and 6. This is so important, especially when you're launching apostolic centers because you're going to have many people that will become connected with the center that will be at different levels and you've got to understand where they are. That's what a leader must do. A leader truly understands where each team member is gifted, where each team member has a rank and a level of faith and the level of grace that God has given for them to operate. Now, action. How does action play in the team ministry? Action means we are hearers, not just hearers, but doers. You know, if God speaks and says, give specific instruction how to operate, God doesn't want you sitting there praying and asking God to open doors. Step out. When God told the priests that was leading in front of Joshua as they were stepping out to conquer the land, God commanded them and said, as soon as your feet touch the water, I'm going to do the miracle. Now, if that had been most modern-day people in churches, they'd have sat there and knelt by the river, praying and fasting, oh, God, 
part this water like you did for Moses. No, that's not the miracle God's going to do. This is the Joshua generation. You can't have a Moses miracle in a Joshua generation. This is a new day. God is doing new things. God's impacting the seven mountains. God's raising believers to, to flow in prophetic ministry and giftings in the seven mountains society. You can't drag a, Josh, a Moses miracle and procedure into a Joshua generation. They didn't sit, stand there by the, the river Jordan praying and begging God to part the water. No, they obeyed. They took action. And as soon as the priests step out and their feet touch the water. Now you'll notice the Bible says the river Jordan overflowed all its banks. God didn't wait until the river Jordan was at the lowest time of drought. God performed his miracle in the time of the worst adversity and circumstances of flooding. Amen. And he, as soon as their feet touched the water, then it parted. There's not just talk about something, but there must be activation to accomplishment. Team members have a steadfastness and a diligence in willingness to minister to others, having more regard for fellow believers than their own comfort level or sense of ability. I cannot stand people that God has anointed and commanded to step out and minister, and they sit back like little wine bags. Well, I don't know. I'm just, you know, I'm just... I'm not anybody in God. You know, I'm not some great minister. I'm just, I'm like, shut up. I know that's not very kind. I'm like, stop. You gotta be, quit making excuses. Have more regard for those that are in need. Quit quenching your gift. Step out and operate. Who cares if you're not, somebody great or you're not skilled if god said he wants to use you let him use you well i'm getting all excited here <laughs> let's move on vision the vision is the ability to see the strategy that will accomplish the team's purpose write the vision make it plain stick and run with it that's what the bible says every team member must catch the vision of the particular team. That's whether it's a brand new apostolic center being launched, whether it is an overall um, a sleevers that are impacting a city in a powerful way, or it's, it's a network. Amen. You know, a lot of folks, they come and they want to join INAP, and they sit down and they don't want to see what the team's vision is. They want to come in and change everything to what they want to do. And... <laughs> You know, the key is, the key is for the individuals that are part of a network to blend their visions together and to identify with the overall vision of the team. It's dangerous to work more on fulfilling an individual status than a team's vision. It's dangerous to focus more on your particular ministry and just try to use an apostolic center or use somebody to launch and to be opportunist in pushing yourself. Truth doesn't give you rank or breakthrough ability. Teaming requires that each member submit to the vision of the team. You see, if you're part of an apostolic center, if you're part of something and, and, and you are not I have no idea what's going on here. If you are not willing to submit to the vision of the team, then, and all you want to do is push your own ministry, you are toxic to apostolic centers. You are toxic to team ministry. Amen. You got to let God's, the individual's vision to come to pass but join together in team ministry. Let's talk about spirit. The spirit is the heart of the team. The team can do all the right things, but if they, if they do not emanate the spirit and the heart of the kingdom, then the vision will be inaccurate. We as team members, even apostolic leaders, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, we must show forth the heart of the kingdom, the heart of love, and unity, and peace, and humility, and things of this nature. 
You see, you have all ability, purpose, vision, order, unity, but if team members don't have the right spirit, they invalidate. For example, trying to prophesy just to set people straight, thinking that God's called you as the policeman to set everybody in your group straight. You know, get off your high horse. That's not what God's called you to do. When you have that wrong spirit, I don't, a prophet who goes and he criticizes others out, outside of God's word, you know, that's a spirit of, of criticism. And I bring that into correction very quickly because he hates a prophet's ministry. Or someone who wants to perform a song or a dance or prophet, prophetically give words just to be seen and to be elevated for personal glory. That becomes revealed very quickly and it invalidates a person's ministry. If you want to truly be used, you can prophesy. I don't care if you say this morning, God spoke to you and Gabriel had a breakfast with you and angels were all around dancing in your living room. You must have the love for the sheep more than love for position and recognition. I will set someone down quicker than you can blink your eye if they are all about just trying to be somebody be powerful, and they're not reaching out and discipling and bringing some, because their love is for position and not for the sheep. The idea in this is, maybe I'm here to serve, not to be seen. I'm not here to try to show out or be competitive. I'm here to serve the kingdom of God. Philippians 1 and 27 says, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Striving together in the Greek athletic team, excuse me, an athletic term, meaning to work together as a team. Evidence of a right spirit or meekness, submission, humility, and the ability to speak into people's lives and transparency. It is the spirit that expresses the we and not the me. Faithfulness is very important in team ministry. Team members must be willing to invest in another's ministry. We must be faithful to the vision of the house and to the leadership to whom we are submitted to. We must have a willing heart to train and serve without feeling or you're wasting your time or biding time until something greater comes. Sit back and just bide their time in ministry. And they're half-heartedly serving because they can't wait to get some position or some place. You gotta be faithful in the small things for God to use you in the big things. I apologize, my son is home and he's probably online right now online, but it's causing my internet to become very slow. So if it's dropping, please forgive me. But I'm almost done with teaching. Amen. Humility is important in team ministry. Some qualities defining humility are preferring one another in love. Will we be flexible in seeing other people's concepts, perspectives, or vision? Are we willing to receive corrective discipline? A mark of spiritual maturity and humility is being able to accept adjustments that God brings to other team members and authorities in our life. Then finally, loyalty. Loyalty is a kingdom quality. We need to be loyal to the things of God and loyal to those that God brings in our life. Amen. Loyalty must be demonstrated in word, in what we say, and in deed, what we do, and in attitude, what we convey. A team member should be supportive of his or her team members and leadership. A, uh, when you're in loyalty, you do not go and question another team member's integrity in a way that is not valid. Good team members and do not come to conclusions until the matter is fully investigated by a leadership authority before they give their opinion. Because when you go and give your opinion, well, I think this has happened. Well, I think so-and-so. You're just causing team ministry to become destroyed, unity to become destroyed. We can encourage one another's God-given talent by acknowledging each other and stirring God inside of each other. Then we will all excel beyond our expectations. 
Well, God bless you. I hope this wasn't too broken up in my teaching. And um, I'm going to try next week to make sure that I emphasize to my son who is home not to get online and do what he does online to cause the internet here at our house to become broken up. But I hope you've been able to receive this teaching. I'm going to do a quick outline to what I taught today. So um, those of you that joined late, you can get a quick overview of what I taught today. I talked about the church being a team, Ephesians 4 and 16. I talked about how teamwork increases effectiveness, how reproduction is based on teamwork. I talked about the five benefits of team ministry concept, which is provision, security, comfort, protection, and strength. That's from Ecclesiastes chapter 9. I also talked about um, chapter 4, Ecclesiastes 4, verses 9 through 12. I talked about the additional benefits of team ministry being safety and balance, exemplifying body life, how it lightens the load in leaders and takes pressure off. I talked about examples of team activation. I talked about important factors found in effective teams. I talked about purpose, order, unity that is based on the principle of cooperation, the principle of coordination, and the principle of communication. I talked about ability in team ministries, vision, action, spirit, faithfulness, humility, and loyalty in team ministry. And I hope this lesson today has been a blessing to you on team ministry. And God bless you as you go forward doing the work of God for the glory of God to see the kingdom of God to be built. We love you. May God richly bless you. This is John Arcovio. Yes, God bless the Garibays. I had a great time last night. Sister Garibay cooked me a wonderful dinner and I just enjoyed some fellowship at the Garibay's house last night. Amen. God bless each one of you. We love you. Every Tuesday night, 6 p.m., Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Central Time. I'm here teaching for an hour, and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to catch this lesson in its fullness, you can go to YouTube, type in Arcovio, and you can, we, you can reach all of our teachings on ministering spiritual gifts. Next week will be our final teaching on spiritual gifts, ministering spiritual gifts, lesson 12. And then I'm going to take a few weeks break from teaching. I'll just be simply doing a periscope, ministering and doing prophetic word. And probably towards the end of October, I'm going to be shifting and starting the teaching all over again from, from, from beginning. Please be in prayer with me. I have felt led of God to transition and move my ministry to Houston, Texas. In the next three days, as God supplies the finances, I'm going to be moving my ministry and the base of Spirit-Led Ministries and INAP to North Houston, Texas, to continue doing the work of God from a central location of America to reach out and accomplish God's purpose. So please be in prayer with us. God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful evening.